Welcome to NTD News. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Here are today's top stories. The U.S. military responds to an attack by an Iranian-backed terror group. U.S. airstrikes targeted five of the militant group's weapon storage facilities. The Chinese regime's state-run media hints at a possible effort to leverage control over the U.S. in the form of withholding face masks and medical supplies. Progress on the coronavirus response bill. The White House and Congress are reportedly close to an agreement. This as lawmakers rush to respond to the pandemic. And Japanese officials say they are planning to hold a safe and secure Summer Olympics as scheduled. This amid speculation that the Games may not go ahead. Coalition airstrikes led by U.S. forces against Iran-backed militia in Iraq. Overnight, the action comes in response to a terror group firing rockets at a U.S. military base the day before, killing two U.S. service members and one British service member. The U.S. launched retaliatory airstrikes aimed at an Iran-backed terror group on Thursday in response to a deadly rocket attack on a U.S. military base in Iraq that killed two Americans and one Brit. The Department of Defense said the airstrikes targeted five facilities in Iraq, housing weapons to target U.S. and coalition troops. The Pentagon said the response was defensive and proportional. The statement named Khatib Hezbollah, or KH, an Iraqi Shiite militant group backed by Iran as the perpetrators of the attack against U.S. forces. I will note that the Iranian proxy group Khatib Hezbollah is the only group known to have previously conducted an indirect, an indirect fire attack of this scale against U.S. and coalition forces in Iraq. The U.S. has repeatedly and publicly warned that crossing a red line would trigger a U.S. response. I would tell you certainly a, I would believe a red line for the United States is going to be the death of U.S. service members or those of our partners and, and allies. The attack involved 30 rockets, of which 18 struck U.S. military base Camp Taji, as well as the three deaths, 14 others were injured. The U.S. military said rockets were fired from a truck launcher that was found by Iraqi security forces near the base. 107 millimeter Russian Katusha rockets such as these have been used in the past by Iranian-backed militia groups in Iraq. An army general said the military have forensic evidence from the truck indicating who was responsible. Previous U.S. airstrikes took place in December in response to similar rocket attacks from the same group. Protesters, including members of KH, stormed the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. With the situation escalating early this year, President Trump authorized an airstrike to take out terrorist Qasem Soleimani, general of Iran's Quds Force. Iran retaliated by firing ballistic missiles at a U.S. airbase in Iraq. The Democratic-led House of Representatives passed legislation on Wednesday to limit President Trump's ability to wage war against Iran. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin says the White House and Congress are very close to reaching a deal on the coronavirus response bill. The potential deal would cap a strained week in Washington as lawmakers rush to respond to the outbreak that's testing the nation's political, financial and health care systems. Secretary of the Treasury Steve Mnuchin offering a positive note Friday morning amid rising virus fears. He says the Trump administration and Congress are very close to getting this done. He's referring to a new coronavirus response bill. It's expected to provide free coronavirus testing, paid emergency leave, and increased unemployment coverage. Mnuchin is the lead negotiator for the administration on this deal. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi also reported similar news late Thursday. I would say it's fair to say we're close to an agreement, subject to the exchange of paper and hope to have an agreement. But not all lawmakers are praising the bill, which was presented by the House of Representatives. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell voiced criticism on Thursday, calling it an ideological wish list. Speaking before the Senate, he suggested Congress aim for more limited legislation. At the same time, he urged Senate Democrats not to block potential requests for smaller, non-controversial bills. The deal at hand builds on an emergency $8.3 billion package approved last week. The new sick leave benefit would require businesses to provide up to 14 days of paid leave to workers who are home quarantined with the virus. The federal government would then reimburse them through tax credits. The bill also enhances unemployment benefits for the jobless and boosts food and nutrition programs for working families, students and seniors. 
And just in, Bloomberg News reports that President Trump will declare a national emergency over the deadly coronavirus. The order would open the door to providing more federal aid to fight the disease. The White House did not immediately respond to a request for comment. And is the Chinese regime preparing to blackmail the U.S. over pharmaceuticals? The Communist Party is hinting it could withhold face masks and medical supplies from the U.S. as a form of leverage on other issues. The coronavirus pandemic is highlighting America's deep dependence on China for medical supplies. President Trump is expected to announce a new executive order to ensure medical supplies and pharmaceuticals are made in America. This in response to coronavirus medical shortages. The U.S. depends on China for medical supplies. Chinese state media, run by the authoritarian regime, hinted at withholding necessary medical supplies from the U.S. Likely over recent U.S. actions to restrict market access to Chinese telecommunications company Huawei. When the virus emerged as an epidemic in China, dependency on overseas production and supply chains posed a threat to U.S. economic stability. But it also threatens national security. A senior advisor at a bioethics research institute said the U.S. is dramatically dependent on China for medical supplies, including prescription drugs. As much as 90 percent of what goes into them comes from China. And medication is crucial for many people. Shortages of antibiotics, masks and gowns would also seriously impact hospitals. One senior advisor at the Hastings Center, a bioethics research institute, described dependency on China as a huge risk. This is not only due to the pandemic, but also should the communist regime choose to exert its control over dependent countries like the U.S. Senator Marco Rubio said in a statement, the coronavirus outbreak has been a wake-up call that we must combat America's supply chain vulnerabilities and dependence on China in critical sectors of our economy. Global leaders and policymakers have been forced to act as the coronavirus sparks economic panic. Here are some of the key measures being taken. 50 billion dollars. 25 billion euros. A billion dollar COVID-19 response fund. This is how some of the world's biggest economies are responding as COVID-19 sparks panic. This is not a financial crisis. This President Donald Trump signed an $8.3 billion emergency spending bill, greenlit low interest loans to vulnerable businesses, and deferred tax payments without interest or penalties for those affected. This action will provide more than $200 billion of additional liquidity to the economy. Payroll tax cuts and paid sick leave for gig workers were mooted. The Federal Reserve cut interest rates by half a percentage point its first emergency rate move since the 2008 financial crisis. The EU Commission will set up an investment fund with firepower of 25 billion euros from existing resources to cushion the blow to vulnerable sectors. We will use all the tools at our disposal so that our economy resists this storm. In the case of Germany, the EU's largest economy, some officials say it could release 50 billion euros without ditching the government's policy of no new debt. The coalition did agree to increase public investments by 12.4 billion euros by 2024 and to make it easier for companies to claim subsidies to support workers on reduced working hours. Italy has been the hardest hit EU country and is raising spending to counter the crisis. Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte optimistically estimated just 7.5 billion euros would be needed. Just a week later, that was upped quite considerably. 25 miliardi. That means Italy's 2020 budget deficit looks certain to climb above 3% of national output, a ceiling set by EU rules. A U.S. bill that aims to strengthen Taiwan's standing in the world and counter diplomatic bullying from communist China could soon become law. A new bill aimed at strengthening Taiwan-U.S. relations passed in the Senate unanimously. It could soon become law. The Taipei Act's main aims are to have the U.S. help strengthen Taiwan's standing in the world and to combat increased diplomatic bullying of the country by Beijing's communist regime. The bill was introduced last year in the House of Representatives. It mentions countries that broke ties with Taipei in favor of closer relations with communist China. Currently, Taiwan is not able to join the World Health Organization during the coronavirus outbreak. Beijing considers Taiwan a renegade province and has pressured and lured international bodies away from it. 
Taiwan considers itself independent and has long sought for greater recognition. The bill now requires President Trump's signature. If not signed, it will go into law in 10 days unless vetoed. Sunday's Democratic debate will take place in Washington, D.C. instead of Arizona. The DNC announced the move due to concerns about the coronavirus. Officials say moving the debate to D.C. will reduce cross-country travel. There will no longer be a live audience. Additionally, one of the debate's moderators, Univision's Jorge Ramos, has stepped down from his role in the debate after possible exposure to the coronavirus. The network's Ilya Calderon will take his place. The debate will air on Sunday, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Meanwhile, Senator Bernie Sanders has won the California Democratic primary, giving him new momentum going into Sunday's debate. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau will be in isolation for two weeks after his wife Sophie tested positive for the coronavirus on Thursday. And the outbreak prompted the province of Ontario to shutter schools to limit the spread. Canadian leader Justin Trudeau will be in isolation after his wife Sophie tested positive for the coronavirus on Thursday. Sophie Gregoire Trudeau recently returned from London with what she described in a personal note as, quote, uncomfortable symptoms of the virus. An official statement said the prime minister himself had no symptoms but was self-isolating as a precaution. And that Trudeau, quote, will continue to fully assume his duties and will address Canadians tomorrow. Canada has reported 145 cases of the virus, three times what it had a week ago. One person in the country has died and seven of Canada's provinces have recorded infections. British Columbia has advised against all non-essential foreign travel. It's located across the border from Washington, one of the worst hit U.S. states, with hundreds of cases and more than 30 deaths. And now to New York. New Rochelle, the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak in the state, is in its second day of containment. All schools have closed their doors until the end of March, leaving kids who depend on school meals in a tight situation. The National Guard came to the city to give meals to families, clean public facilities and distribute supplies. NTD's Melina Weiskup reports from New Rochelle. The containment zone covers all areas within a one-mile radius of Young Israel of New Rochelle Synagogue, where the first confirmed cases were found. There are no barricades or police patrolling the containment zone, only a limitation on large gatherings. People are still allowed to go out and even encouraged to do so. But with over 100 cases confirmed in Westchester County, the streets are more empty than usual. Just from personal experience over the last couple of days, people may, may not be going to small stores and, and just patronizing our local businesses. I think we need to encourage people to continue to do that uh, because they're going to suffer. They depend on, on a lot of the local people to shop and eat at restaurants. Alongside the financial strain on small businesses, school closures put pressure on families who depend on school meals to help feed their children. I'm here in New Rochelle, which is the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak here in New York State. Earlier this morning, the National Guard dropped off a shipment of food here to help feed the kids that rely on schools for meals during the period of time that the schools are closed. I really appreciate this food because we might not be able to get out as often, so that's, I'm just really thankful. The Guard will not be policing the area or engaged in military activity, according to the city's website. They started their assistance by helping out at this nonprofit, unloading a truck of donated food and distributing the meals. Um, and a quote came out and said, you know, um, alone, al alone we can't do as much, but together uh, we can really make an impact. Um, so, um, and that's the concept and that's the language that is, uh, is really the focus of today's mission. With thousands of kids in the area that rely on free and reduced price lunch, the support from the National Guard and other community members is welcomed and appreciated. Reporting from New Rochelle, Melina Weiskup, NTD News. It's great to see hope in all the uncertainty. And coming up in China, doctors in Wuhan Central Hospital were forbidden to talk about the coronavirus. Now the hospital's medical staff have some of the most infections. We have the details after the break. We are being censored. America's news outlets no longer provide the truth. 90% of news outlets in the United States are controlled by six corporations. They're not out to tell you the truth of what's happening. They're out to tell you the picture of the world that they represent. The mission of the Epic Times is to chase the truth. 
to ground all statements and facts and prevent people from being misled. The Epic Times is independent. We're not controlled by any special interests and we never will be. The Epic Times is a non-partisan media. That means we don't stand for any political party. This is a battle. A battle between truth and deceit. A battle between forces that would ensnare this country in ignorance and between a media that wants to present you with the truth. Subscribe today and join the Americans who are seeking truth and tradition. We'd love to have you on board. Viewers have described China Uncensored like The Daily Show, but about China. Well, at the beginning, I was super excited when I got 500 views, and now the show's grown to about half a million subscribers on YouTube. One episode reached 7.9 million people. I'm a little freaked out that that many people have seen my face. In five years, I see China Uncensored as the sole source of edutainment worldwide. Wuhan Central Hospital was one of the first to discover the coronavirus, but it has forbidden staff from talking about it. Now they're paying the price. NTD's Juliet Song reports. The Wuhan Central Hospital's medical staff now seriously infected. Four doctors have died and another four are on the brink. Doctors recount being censored after alerting superiors. They then watch their co-workers die after being left in the dark. On December 16th, a patient was admitted with a high fever. Head of the emergency unit, Ai Fen, was then told this person had coronavirus. On December 29th, the hospital alerted the local CDC of four similar cases, but the CDC took no action. The next day, Ai Fen received a lab result which confirmed a SARS-like coronavirus. She sent a photo to co-workers and the photo soon spread through Wuhan's medical circles. Fellow coronavirus whistleblower Dr. Li Wenliang also shared the photo. That same night, Wuhan's health commission told doctors not to spread information about unknown pneumonia. Both doctors were reprimanded. Li later died after contracting the virus. Other doctors were told not to disclose information about the virus. In early January, patients who hadn't been to the Huanan Seafood Market, where authorities first said the virus originated, started to show symptoms. So did medics who came into contact with them. A doctor telling Southern Weekly, this is the direct evidence of human-to-human -human transmission. When infected doctors reported their illnesses to the hospital, they weren't allowed to call it unknown pneumonia or viral pneumonia. They could only call it a lung infection. One doctor noting that calling it a lung infection doesn't show it's a novel coronavirus and doesn't imply human-to-human -human transmission. By January 16th, 26 medics in the hospital were suspected to be infected. But the Wuhan Health Commission claimed there were no such cases by that time. In fact, Chinese health authorities didn't even confirm human-to-human -human transmission until January 20th. The hospital also didn't allow doctors to wear protective gear during initial discovery, saying it would create panic. In early January, hospital management criticized Dr. Jiang Shueqing for wearing a face mask to a meeting. Many co-workers didn't see him wear face masks afterward. He was infected several days later and died on March 1st. Juliet Song, NCD News, New York. Small businesses in Europe are feeling the economic impact from the coronavirus. Some might not survive, though many nations are investing billions to protect their economies. NTD's France correspondent David Vives has the story. Can you imagine visiting a crowded museum like the Louvre or the Eiffel Tower with no queue and no crowd ahead? Uh -oh. Well, I've been to Paris in the past years ago and you literally couldn't move, you know, because it's so packed. It's actually been more enjoyable because it's a lot quieter, yeah. It could be one of the only positive effects the pandemic is having on the tourism industry. France welcomed 90 to 100 million tourists last year and it's now the nation's most impacted sector. 
In this family-run hotel next to the Eiffel Tower, only 11 of 40 rooms are occupied. The number of cancellations is something Charlene Pelletier has never seen. In the manager's own words, it's a disaster. We've drastically dropped the prices. So, for example, this room is available for about $110, where normally at this time of year it's at least $280. But it's made no difference. It's really fear which is stopping clients from coming. For Michael Fassad, director of the World Union of Small and Medium Enterprises, the outlook isn't good. In tourism, which includes hotels and transportation, the decrease is very important. Business owners we are working with told us they are operating at about 25 percent capacity compared to their usual. European countries have announced recovery plans to support small businesses that have to stop or slow their activities. Germany and France investing billions. The French Minister of Economy said the government would invest billions to help businesses, but hasn't offered a precise number. Fassa says some businesses will likely become bankrupt before they see the money. In France, in my opinion, 5,000 to 10,000 small businesses to bankrupt and close. Those who were already in bad situation before the coronavirus, it's very likely they won't survive. The best hope for many of these small businesses is a recovery of their activity in April or May. Reporting by David Vives, NTD News, Paris. Coming up, hit by two coronavirus outbreaks. A cruise company is now suspending operations. 18 of its ships will be docked. More on that after the break. Absolutely the number one show on the planet. I love it. Breathtaking. Incredible. Awesome. Very exciting. Mesmerizing. Really enjoyed it. It makes you feel alive. Absolutely flawless. I laughed, I cried. Colorful and vibrant and joyous. The dancers, you guys are amazing. They can just fly. Gravity does not apply to them. Oh my gosh, I was so intrigued by this. I'd get lost in the music and I'd get lost in what I'm seeing on stage. It's a very eye-opening experience. We came for her birthday. Great experience, well worth it. Even though it's been going for about 10 years, every year it's a completely different show. I know this sold out very, very quickly, and I can see why now. I think I've not seen something like this ever before. I would recommend it to everybody. I recommend it to everyone. Top Japanese government officials said today they were determined to hold a safe and secure Olympics on schedule. A day after President Trump said Tokyo should consider delaying them for a year because of the pandemic. Japan's Olympics minister was quick to hit back at U.S. President Donald Trump Friday, saying the Olympics are on schedule and, quote, safe and secure. The remarks were made hours after Trump suggested Tokyo should delay the Games for a year amid the coronavirus outbreak. I just can't see having no people there. In other words, not allowing people. You know, I, I like that better than I like having empty stadiums all over the place. I think if you cancel it, make it a year later, that's a better alternative than doing it with no crowd. Officials say Japanese leader Shinzo Abe later spoke with Trump on the phone for about 50 minutes Friday morning Japan time. Trump then tweeted a more upbeat message, calling the just-completed Olympic venue magnificent and saying Abe had done an incredible job and good things will happen for Japan and their great prime minister. Friday's comments fit with Japan's efforts to quash speculation that the Games may not go ahead. This year's Olympics have cost the country at least $12 billion in preparations and attracted more than $3 billion in domestic sponsorships. Princess Cruises, the operator of two ocean liners quarantined because of numerous coronavirus cases, is suspending voyages for all of its ships for two months. Princess Cruises, the operator of two ocean liners that suffered coronavirus outbreaks, said it's suspending all voyages for two months. Shares of its parent company, Carnival, which have already lost over half their value since the start of the year, tumbled further on the news. The suspension impacts all 18 ships 
operated by Princess Cruises, starting Thursday all the way until May 10th. Princess Cruises has found itself caught in the crosshairs of the public health crisis. First in February, when its Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan came under the spotlight after hundreds of people on board were infected with coronavirus. At that point, it was the biggest concentration of confirmed cases outside China. Roughly 700 people on board were infected and six died. Then last week, its Grand Princess liner was denied entry to San Francisco Bay after authorities learned some passengers and crew had developed flu-like symptoms. An initial round of testing found that 21 people had been infected. Hundreds of other travelers who were on the ship are now under quarantine at military bases across the country. The cruise industry has been battered by the virus, which has plunged the overall travel and tourism industry into one of its worst crises. Coming up, it's very rare, but a winemaker in Germany has made wine from winter grapes. We have the details after the break. When you look at TV networks in America, a soundbite and fighted out culture prevails on news and commentary programs. As a Canadian, I'm fascinated with America, and I wanted to offer American thought leaders an opportunity to share their thoughts in a deep dive format where we can explore their ideas together. And so American Thought Leaders was born. The world's most brilliant thinkers believed that open discourse was the key to greatness. However, all around the world, we see that discourse is being stifled and political agendas have subverted media. The Epoch Times launched its Global Thought Leaders program to bring back this great tradition of free thought. As the host of American Thought Leaders, every week I interview some of the most intriguing minds on the most pressing issues of our time. Be sure to check out our new episodes every week. Move over Chick-fil-A, Popeyes and Wendy's. A popular convenience store says it's entering the chicken fray. This week, 7-Eleven announced that it's opened a chicken and biscuit restaurant in New York. The Race the Roost in-store restaurant includes on its menu chicken sandwiches, wings and fried chicken tenders. The Race the Roost also offers signature sauces and breakfast sandwiches. The food is both made to order and put out as grab and go options. 7-Eleven says it put the restaurant in one of its evolution stores. And now to southern Germany, where a winemaker has succeeded in producing a small but precious quantity of ice wine after farmers saw a mild winter. Winemaker Jens Simula successfully harvested Riesling ice wine grapes amid 17 degree temperatures in January. The harvest came after they had frozen on the vine for several hours and eventually producing around 22 gallons of golden liquid with an intensely sweet taste. So what makes it so special? Certain conditions must exist in order to press the rare drink. One is a minimum temperature of 19.4 degrees, and the other is a minimum sugar content. If these conditions are met, you're ready to produce ice wine. Not to mention, the frozen grapes must be pressed before they thaw, meaning only a small amount of highly concentrated wine is produced. That makes it expensive. Simula was the only producer here to manage any sort of harvest. Out of the 500 stations, 185 reported no ice day, where temperatures were at freezing point all day long. So conditions for making ice wine were indeed very poor, and he was definitely lucky. According to the local meteorological office, this is the second mildest winter in Germany since records began in 1881. 
And that's the latest updates for now. Thanks for tuning in. Catch up again at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm Tiffany Meyer.